Hi, I'm Andy Lambert from Content Cal. You're listening to the Social Media Talks podcast with Alan Hennessy from compassmedia.ie. Welcome to Social Media Talks podcasts, brought to you by compassmedia.ie. Hello and thank you for joining me. This is the Social Media Talks podcast, brought to you by compassmedia.ie. Episode number 39. I'm your host, Alan Hennessy, and this is the podcast to help business owners who want to learn more about social media marketing. And if you'd like to listen to any of our previous podcasts, you can log on to our website at compassmedia.ie forward slash podcasts. You can also join our Facebook group by logging on to facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash social media talks. And we're looking forward to today's show. Today we're going to be joined by Andy Lambert, who is one of the directors and the founding members of a company called Content Cal, which is a posting and scheduling tool that's available to help you relieve the stress and better manage your content across social media. Andy has over 10 years' experience in creating markets, building profitable businesses and leadership roles in industry-leading SaaS organizations. So without further ado, I think we will transition straight over to the interview with Andy. Hi Andy, thanks for joining us today on the Social Media Talks podcast. How are you today? Very well, thanks Alan. It's great to have your company again. Yes, back for the second time. Uh, Absolutely. (laughs) Delighted. It must be over a year since we've talked uh, on the last podcast, I think it was. (laughs) I think so. You can't get rid of me, Alan. I know, I know. It's brilliant. (laughs) (laughs) And uh, for anyone who doesn't know, we've given you a brief introduction at the start of the show. Uh, So you might just uh, give us a little bit of an update on that. Yes, so um, my name's Andy Lambert. So I'm um, one of the founding team of this company here called Content Cal. So yeah, so for my sins, I'm one of the directors here and uh, yeah, responsible for, for growing the business, all of kind of sales and marketing essentially. Yeah, it's been a very interesting journey over the last 18 months, as I'm sure we'll, we'll chat about over this. Mm, yeah. mm, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, what we're going to be talking about today is, is Content Cal. And so it's it's a scheduling uh, scheduling tool. I always have to be very careful when I say that because people say, oh, it's scheduling, I don't do scheduling. You know, and I say, no, <laughs> no, no, no. But um, no, no, it's a, a fantastic tool. I'm not affiliated, and Andy will Andy, Andy will verify that as well here. But yep. um, we just find that it, I just found that it's a fantastic tool. And as I said, we've spoke about it uh, on a previous podcast. And if you want to listen back to how it all started in Content Cal, you can listen to our I think it's episode number four or something like that. So it was way back when we were only starting out, and I had the I had Andy uh, the pleasure of talking to Andy back then as well. So Andy, um, for anyone who doesn't really understand or know what con- Content Cal is, is you might give them just a brief um, run through of what it is. Certainly. So it's a really simple way for businesses, individuals, agencies to plan, publish and report on their social media content. So for anyone that wants to post social media onto Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook at the same time from one place, um, it's a really simple way of doing that laid out, as the name would suggest, in a calendar view. So um, yeah, I mean, the idea came from Content Cal when we were back in the day when we were a social media agency and we used to plan all our social media content in a spreadsheet. Uh, in a spreadsheet, basically, we made a spreadsheet look like a calendar mm. and um, we used to just copy and paste our content straight from that spreadsheet into Facebook directly, Twitter directly. And it just took so much time. So it made sense just to put together all of like the planning from spreadsheets in a nice calendar view and link it with all of these social networks to get a really nice, simple planning and publishing tool, which, you know, essentially, is, as you, we were speaking about on, a, on the intro to this, like, you know, it's just ludicrously simple to use. Yeah, and it is. It's a fantastic tool. Like, and I think, I think the fact that it's so visual as well, that it makes it a lot more easier as well to understand, because I know there is other scheduling tools out there and you know they are they are very good but yeah i think where content cal comes into its own is is it's visually 
uh, easy to understand. It's it's not too complex. You don't have to be moving from pages to pages. It's all sort of straight in front of you. And there's you know the the, the fact the whole point of I think scheduling and, and making your life easier as well with social. I think that's that's a key part of um, what we do as much as anything else. Absolutely right. I mean, like calendars are natural; they're intuitive. Everyone's used to working. Mm. You know, everyone manages their diary on some kind of calendar, and it's just one of those things that you know. Me personally, whenever I'm feeling like overwhelmed with so much stuff I need to do, the moment you've written something down and can lay it out visually, you're like, actually, you know, this doesn't seem so onerous mm. or intimidating anymore because you know, the moment that you've pictured something, you can go, actually, I, I see a logical path to doing it. Because it's it's one of those things that we we see inhibiting a lot of small, mid-sized businesses from really making a success on social because one they're time restrained because very few of those size businesses even have a marketing team let alone a social media person Mm. so getting a tweet out or just getting anything out on social slips to the bottom of a list and and it can be overwhelming when you're like okay what do i start go on facebook get distracted by your news feed and then think okay what am i going to write so you know having having a dedicated platform for that really focuses the mind and being able to lay it out and picture your kind of social media story in a column in a calendar view yeah, it seems to have kind of resonated with with quite a few people, I think. Mm. And I think one of the nice features that I like is is the way you can, uh, if you come across an idea or you have an idea that you can actually put it in um, on on your actual calendar. You can put it in at the side where you can just say, right, I'll hold on to that one because that's an idea that I can use yeah, down the road and whatever. So you know that is, and I, I I don't think there's any of the other platforms that actually do that. In fact, I know there isn't. They don't do that at all. So I think that's a fantastic little point. It's like a, like a sticky note for want of a better word. Word. That's exactly that you, you it. Yeah. Know what I mean, like that's uh, you know because I know, for instance, like if I come along and I'd be doing my social, and I'm saying, right, okay, I'll do this, and then suddenly I see a post, as you said, you know, suddenly you're on Facebook and you're going, oh, look at that, and hold on, I just have it, and an hour goes by, or half an hour goes by. But if you're actually out and about and you're you're working away, and then suddenly you see something that might be of interest, a bit of content that you can actually create, that you can just put that little note beside it and say, I must remember to do that because I know with me, I have so much going through my head. Most days that I forget about it but if I have it written down it also helps me a lot more. That's exactly it because um, one of the things that often gets forgotten about with with social media tools is is creativity right so mm. you know um, our friend Trevor will have a lot to, to say on, on, <laughs> on that point right so the thing is like when does creativity hit you usually at the most in a, inopportune moment for me mm. it's the moment I'm about to turn out the light you know and go to bed and go actually that's a great idea yeah. uh, I need to write it down quick and that's the thing like with the other tools which are incredibly strong and you know um, buffer is one of my favorites out, outside of us obviously mm. <laughs> but like <laughs> ultimately the tools are built to you know to help you get your social media updates out but you know that that bit does take time and those tools do save you time in you know scheduling it but the bit that takes the longest in our experience because we're social media people we're not technologists you know this this is built to serve our purpose because yeah. we we do social you know the bit that takes the longest is is coming up with ideas in the first place exactly as you as you said Alan you know mm. Um, and just having a place to store those because it's amazing the impact it has when you go in you think okay now I'm gonna you know skip put aside a, an hour at the beginning of my week to get my social content out or you know to schedule it and plan it for a week it's remarkable the impact it has when you've already laid out some of your ideas immediately you're you know the creative synapses are firing you go actually yeah, perfect I'll drag that into Monday I'll drag that into Tuesday I'll edit it further and it's it's just one of those things that just really helps speed up the creative process when you can see everything and you've got your your reminders and your sticky notes and your drafts all in your calendar mm. and I think as as you say there you know like it is remind it is actually say all right okay and then of course with being creative you know that creative flair comes into it where you start saying okay right well if I can do that I can also yeah I could I could work this into it this into a post as well and now suddenly you have four or five pieces of content that you're starting to move on from that one idea but you know if you had a if you hadn't wrote it down you probably would have forgotten about it and you probably would have went off in a different a different road if for want of a better word Word, you know so yeah no I, th- I, th- I think it is it's great so as I said so that's so we sort of have an idea now as to what Content Cal does um, the website is contentcal.io isn't it Andy correct yeah yeah absolutely yeah. so if you want you can find out all the details on that as well. and we'll put that into the show notes as well I know from talking to you off air that, that you have had um, an extremely busy year and you might give us a little uh, little bit of a, an update on what has happened to Content Cal over the last uh, I suppose uh, eight Eight, eight nine months or so yeah so um yeah it's kind of interesting to to look back on things like this because 
it's always nice to see where you've where you've been and where you've come from. It's nice to kind of reflect sometimes, especially as you know you've been running a podcast as you say for for nearly a year now. Mm, so mm. amazing! I imagine you can see the difference. Oh, um, massively, us. massively. <laughs> it's it's, it's a, you know whilst we've both got a long way to go, I imagine, but uh, you know it's just nice to kind of reflect on things sometimes. Mm. So um, we we launched Content Cat actually at the beginning of 2017. So when we spoke, we were what eight seven eight months old. Yeah. So yeah, you would have been so yeah. fairly new in into this market and it's a very it's a difficult market to get into because our competition Hootsuite and Buffer to name probably the, the biggest two we get compared to or asked how we compare to you know they they're massive companies mm. you know, Hootsuite are you know, they've just raised another 73 million dollars so they're, they're not not short of cash and they have about 600 <laughs> employees yeah we're a UK company with 15 people so how can you compete on that scale and it's it's been a really interesting thing mm. really interesting journey so when we spoke when you know we were seven eight months old I think we had about around 500 companies using our product and I think um, now oh, nearly a year later we're at six and a half thousand companies wow. using it in 21 countries so that's interesting a, that's, that, a, yeah. that's that's a huge jump you know what I mean within a year like that's that's a massive uh, growth but like you know it's fantastic to hear that well I'm, I'm, I'm blown away by that actually <laughs> it's um yeah it's it's gone it's gone well it's fair to say you know it's it's still incredibly challenging as anyone that works in social media you You've got to be on your toes. Mm. You know, face change things in a heartbeat, as do Instagram, um, everything, and Twitter's terms of service changes. All of that makes life very challenging when you yeah, work in this I'd space. Say so. I'd you know, say so. Uh, you train people in the space, so you've got to be <laughs> you've yeah. got to be up to date with all this stuff all the time, don't you? Oh, of course you do, and it's it's it is so true. Like you know, um, I always say like if they give another update, you know, I always remember. Uh, oh, it's going back now when LinkedIn changed their whole dashboard, the way they they. The, the whole outlook, the whole look of it. And I remember I was doing actually a course um, on LinkedIn with a company and I had something like 40 slides or something that we were going to go through over the two days and whatever that I was doing. <laughs> and uh, I just said, I'll just check this update before I go to bed on whatever night it was. So say it was a Monday night and I was training on the Tuesday. I said, I'll just check this update before I went. And I went in and they had changed everything. And I literally, <laughs> and I literally stood there. I, I stood and I literally nearly started crying in front of because I had 40 slides that I had to go and amend then I had to, and because they changed it all and they never told anybody they just sort of decided that yet yeah, this is going to be updated and I went and I had to go and spend I think it was another three or four hours just updating slides and trying to figure out so oh, no. you know you. it really is and so I can understand like from that point of view and I was only doing it on a small scale if you're doing it on you know for obviously content Cal because of the platform and the what it is that there's so so many I suppose intricate parts to it as much as it must be um, quite daunting when that happens <laughs> <laughs> it, it it definitely is because you I mean you've got to make decisions that are mm. you try and be in the best interest of of all of your customers right so take Twitter's terms of service which is a really interesting one because the rules they have are incredibly grey in terms of what what's changed you know you can't put out similar tweets you know what what does that mean like yeah uh, that's really difficult so we we've had to make some decisions to say you know there's some things that we had to change on the product to to, to say you know you can't post the same update from multiple different profiles yeah. so had to make a change there but giving people the ability to repost the same tweet uh, we still retained that ability so allowing people to kind of make edits and slight tweaks to it because mm. ultimately when the lifespan of a tweet is what 17 seconds or whatever it yeah, is now it's it ridiculous yeah. you know, it disappears after 10 minutes anyway like you've, it's, it's gone you know, it's unless gone, you're doing gone. unless you're actually doing research where you're actually going back and you're you know that way but I yeah it's, it's gone it's history exactly so you know when you've invested time in creating that content you do want the ability to repurpose that mm. somehow but yeah it, it's still the rules are still incredibly great so we're still monitoring that really carefully because you know I've had a lot of people ask us over the last few months I think it's about three months since they released it saying you know what does that actually mean will our tweets get blocked if it looks similar we haven't seen any tweets blocked yet but the moment we start seeing seeing those error messages come back from Twitter saying you know this got blocked because yeah. XYZ and we make further updates but yeah always on our toes Alan, that is for sure. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I well believe it. So, with regards to uh, up 
updates over the last last while. What have uh, what is what are the new features that are on Content Cal now? I guess the the biggest there's two areas of of updates because there's a lot of things that we've just kind of tweaked and improved over the mm. time. Um, we've made it look a whole lot cleaner and nicer. You'll probably see some like changes when when you go in. Mm. To, be, to be honest, we, we we do something we we do a release every couple of weeks, so yeah, constant progressing. So two two major things is one the organization tools we've added a lot more to that so the ability to categorize content so tag certain pieces of content so that you can visually see that in your calendar to see you know do i have enough of content related to i don't know product yeah. or news or thought leadership basically we spend i'm sure you're doing your training but you know we spend a lot of time talking about you know content themes or content categories or however people describe them you know everyone and like you say you know it's all about social media strategy and whilst strategy is very easy easy word to say very hard to execute in terms of social and very few people actually work in a coherent strategy as I'm sure that you mm. I'm sure you see that from yeah, your training very much so <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine <laughs> so, so we've given a load of tools now to help people organize better so you know when you've you sat down and had your meeting you now know you know who you want to target and what you're going to talk about on social being able to kind of visually put that together in content cal and plan that so you can see you've got a nice balanced mix of content because no one wants to follow anyone who's just said look at our latest offers look at our latest news yeah. all about us things that are relevant and interesting to um to their user i think that is the key as well that as you say there and what you touched on is, is you know nobody just wants to be sold to they want to be i suppose entertained and educated as much as anything else exactly exactly that alan so you know i'm um, yeah i'm preaching to the converted here but um <laughs> you know ultimately you know it's the, the the whole kind of thing that success on social is all about relevancy and consistency mm. so all of your kind of organization and planning tools so you know like we said like the category tagging the ability to have your draft note the ability to we've we've updated the way that you manage campaigns so you can kind of plot in your calendar a bit like a kind of project management tool mm. it looks like plotting your calendar like campaigns that you might be running for a certain period of time so maybe you know your company's exhibiting at an event over this period map that in your calendar and make sure all of your social contents align to the overarching strategy and your activities that they're going on so it's just about creating as i said some, some relevancy and some consistency to, to what you're doing so as long as you're relevant and you're consistent then then you're going to win so um so they're the organization tools we've added um other than kind of cleaning up the interface and make it just look a bit prettier um and we've also added the analytics piece which yeah. has been a, a big thing so yeah analytics. I, think, I think that's Sorry. that's a huge part of i know in my business that you know when we're talking with our clients they're always saying well can you see give me the metrics on that and can you and so having that analytics tool within your content cal it, it, it's it it, it, it reduces the stress on me for definitely and i know a few people that i've talked to have said yes they have they found that it's very very useful as well perfect yeah, and that's that's exactly what we want to do so i mean whilst there's there's page level statistics which is fine which will tell you over the last 30 days you know mm. how your you know page has grown uh, or profile has grown uh, but the thing that's probably more interesting is that your individual post metrics so and then let's say over the last 30 days you put out 21 posts on facebook underneath each post you can see how it's performed how many unique link clicks shares likes whatever at mm. a post level you can filter out your top performing content and then you can also uh, I guess an important feature is being able just to, to reshare that so add that back into your calendar so your top performing content kind of complete the cycle so you know the kind of content that's resonating well going back to the organizational piece you know your different like themes that you're working to which theme is resonating mm. well with your audience doing more around that topic yeah so ultimately as I said before like completing the cycle from planning to publishing to analysis and then need back around the circle again yeah and I think that's great because you know that's and that's really is the trick with it like you know like I've often seen people and they, you know, you'd have 101 posts and whatever. And I would say to them, actually stop for a minute now and look and see what is performing best, what's working best. Because if that's working best, that's the one that you need to be spending more time on. Not the stupid posts that's only getting one or two likes when you're getting 50 or 100 or 1,000 likes towards the other ones. You know what I mean? That's where I'm saying that's where your audience, that's what they want to be seeing. So concentrate. So being able to see that and then being able to, I suppose, you know, reuse it and remarket it again. It's 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 a fantastic way of being able to, I suppose, it, it, it saves you time as much as anything else. You just have to retweak it and stuff like that if it's if there's a date on it or whatever it may be. But at the same token, 
you're able then to rework that content into you know more content for you for yourself and reduce as you said the stress of it and the, the hassle of having to try and go and find more content absolutely that absolutely that so yeah so that's that's kind of that, they're the main updates that we've done this year in the last kind of uh, you know 10 11 months since we've spoken and mm. so that's that's definitely helped but the, you know the amount of feedback we've had from our from our customers um, I'll probably refer to more of them as a community now because mm. like like yourself because you know it's really touching how passionate people have got around uh, around what we're doing and people that kind of recognize it. and you were amongst kind of the, one of the first yeah. really like yourself and Lucy to go actually you know th- these these guys are onto something and it's really nice you know that that kind of community is growing and um, so we, we'd started on that basis we'd actually started a, a Facebook group that the kind of content planning mm. uh, Facebook group where people can kind of come along with their with their challenges around content ideas and share that with with our community and that's and that's the thing whereas you know we, we don't just want to be the the company that's just a technology provider we're we're social media people you know as a yeah. priority you know yeah. that, that's not and I just happen to make a technology that we want yeah and I think that's a, that's a key point on what you're saying there you know like we like as you say like you know it's people would say oh well content cat it's just a tool yeah it is a tool but the people that are behind us are actually and don't get me wrong I know the other the other the other companies are as well but you're you're reachable you, you can contact you know like you know you can reach out to Andy Lambert social or you can and you will get a reply it's not going to be an automated oh well if you write to you know what I mean and yeah, I, yeah. And I th- because as well your team and we spoke about it previously as is that your team have come from that background so they understand the challenges and they also understand that you know and I'm sure you've probably use it you yourselves you, when people have come to you and says well I like the way such and such is doing this or I like the way this is working on content cal but could you do this are you probably saying well that's great because you know as much as anything else it's feedback it's understanding and it's sharing that content and it's starting to do and with regards as you said you know we were there at the start and whatever I seen yourself and content cal and I just loved the whole idea and I remember getting contact with you and you came straight back uh, to me and I was sort of impressed by that that it was like yeah of course no problem and then obviously when we talked we got to know each other better and it, it became more of a friendship as opposed to just you know there's Andy exactly. and content Cal type of thing and likewise I know with Lucy Hall we had Lucy as well on uh, the podcast as well and she's fantastic she's a huge advocate as well as as, 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 as ourselves of content Cal because it's just it's a good it's an actually good platform to work with you know this that's the, the, the end of the day that's what it is that's exactly it and I think it's just it's just really nice and I, I love this whole community element and funny enough for being in social but um you know it's mm. it's it's the thing is it's the same as I say when I'm doing kind of any workshops around you know content strategy I'm like content is great you know but it's nothing without a community behind it so and the same as this business like content cal is not more important than the community that we we look after and serve Mm. the needs of so so that's why we're we're super mindful of that kind of thing and wanting to make sure that you know it's support from people like yourselves and Lucy and a range of others now you know doesn't doesn't come easily you've got you've got lots of things to do in life so I don't take any of this for granted. So it's it's great to, to have that support and feel like you're you're building something uh, with meaning. Mm. And of course, it's one of those things as well that you, we want to do as much as possible because technology doesn't solve all of the problem, right? So if your if your challenge is you know where businesses want to grow, they grow on social media, and it's very difficult for small and mid sized businesses to do so. You know, as you know, the companies that you train mm. because it's so difficult to, and it's getting dip more and more difficult for businesses to grow anyway with all the restrictions now for GDPR and all of these changes, right? So, don't so mention, social media don't mention that be. word. Don't mention that <laughs> yeah, word. That, or them, that, that, them, been, them acronyms or whatever they want to call. You, you need to, yeah, can you beat me out for that bit? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to edit, definitely going to edit that out. Yeah, yeah. Everyone's switched. <laughs> but, you know, it, no, it does know. make it, it, does make it hard. So, so what we're kind of really, really keen on is finding ways in which we can help people come up with, with ideas. And that's where the next iteration of content cal is going to go. Mm. Help people come up with ideas because that's that's the thing. Yeah, you know, outside 
outside of the time limitations, because everyone's like, I don't have time to do social, you know, I'm too busy, which we hear all the time. We can't do anything about that. Yeah. But what we can do is start to give people some great ideas for what they could do around social. Because right right now, you know, what I hear in, in like meetings and calls and workshops I might do, you'll hear that people are like, I've got no time to do social. And, you know, I run a tile shop. No one wants to hear about bathroom tiles. Yeah. But actually, social isn't just about, you know, talking about your product. There's a whole raft behind the product that actually interesting stuff, the thing that your audience might be mm. more interested in knowing, but you just, you know, these business owners just can't see that yet. Yeah. And it's like, the, like, and I agree totally, like, like that similar with the guy who buys the, t- who has the tile shop. How is he going to make it, I suppose, one for want of a better word, m- more sexy type of thing than mm. laying a few tiles? But there is ways and means of doing this. And I think with a community and, and the shared community like that, that people are getting into they get ideas and they sort of say oh okay and they bounce ideas off each other as well like I know exactly. you know I know for instance like there's a group that I'm in that we would uh, a lot of uh, there are a lot of content managers where they would actually go in and ask questions and say what do you think of this I'm trying I'm thinking about doing this and, and the barrage of just answers that come back it, it's gold it's, it's pure gold dust exactly that exactly that so I think one of, one of the things I'm really interested in exploring um, over the next year or so well, not just me person the whole the whole business is really behind this mm. is that there is a lot of people that are out there that have a great ability to write content and you know incredibly creative writers and great way of like seeing things from different perspectives and there's a lot of brands out there that out there that have no idea what to say so mm. there's definitely there's a lot more work to be done here and you, I think you'll see quite a lot of movement in this space anyway about like connecting brands with copywriters across the world somehow yeah. um, mm. because because we're even seeing it here at content content Cal at a really small scale with our customers Customers, like I was saying to you before, before we went live with this, that um, we're seeing less people invest their own time in doing organic social content and actually pushing that out either to small agencies or virtual mm. assistants, kind of pushing that out. So, you know, social content's only growing, it's not going anywhere, yeah. but brands increasingly have less time to do that, which I think is a really interesting thing. Whether it's the right or wrong thing to do, I'm, you know, I can't comment on that, but um, and it, it does, you know, it does depend on the situation, but it, it's clear to see that that whole time and creativity argument is is a very real one so where's it going to go from where's mm. it going to go from here so and i think so. the, i think as well as that and I, I agree totally with you um with content writers and stuff like that but i also think that it's it's about it's it's about educating the businesses as well because sometimes like i've talked to businesses before and i've said but have you not thought about doing that that and that just simple little things and I'm, oh well, why would i do that and i said but like even just take a photograph of that and hold on to it or you know and then use it later on in a process and they go oh I never thought about you know so I think it's part of educating as much as it is you know giving that virtual assistant work that extra work or whatever whatever it may be but I think it's also about educating that when they do send that content out to a virtual a virtual assistant or a you know a creative writer or a copywriter or whatever it may be that there is a certain amount of content that the copywriter has wow this is a load of content that I can use which will make it a lot easier for them as well but it's all also, the brand's business is getting so the person who's involved in the business is actually saying, you know, well, that's my content. I I don't that, or you know what I mean. It's just that it's rewrote or whatever it may be, but it's still basically their content. Exactly, and I, it's a really interesting point you make because, it, as you said this b- before as well, we've spoken about this before, where it's like it is focused. It's you can't get away from strategy, right? So mm. even if you're going to push your content out to to other people to do it, as you say, it's still your your mm. content, still your brand's reputation. So you need to understand that strategy behind it so realistically I, whilst whoever's actually doing the doing that's that's just an interesting kind of dynamic shift in the market as to you know whether it's cheaper to outsource rather than hire a social media manager in-house yeah. but it's definitely a responsibility that every business owner needs to have irrespective of age or gender or whatever you know they need to understand what their social media strategy is without a shadow of a doubt yeah no it is it's brilliant and like look we, we you know we know about Facebook changing the way the algorithms and all that are and that you know it's getting increasingly harder to you know get your organic posts to reach out more I, I I don't know what what your feeling is on that you might you know give your opinion on that it's, it's, a, it's a it's a challenging one really I mean uh, li- like you're saying before my my personal favorites are LinkedIn and Twitter I've mm. seen LinkedIn's the best the best source of content as far as I'm concerned for, for my own personal interest and for the interest of the business um, and Twitter is the best place to reach out to people that you've never met for it's yeah. definitely the best place to start like a Facebook is an interesting one. I certainly feel there's we've got more traction from uh, from 
the group than we have from our page mm. because you know facebook's great for for that kind of community and they seem to have prioritized groups um, certainly in terms of newsfeed i think they've, they've probably over prioritized it because they obviously switched themselves into the whole you know a community thing rather than just mm. just pushing content out um but i then again think it's it's dangerous to call strategy too soon because facebook's still chasing their tail as far as i'm concerned and they, they're they're a bit wounded so changing a strategy to try and keep up with facebook is is going to be a difficult one mm. certainly from an organic perspective um as much as i as i hate really hate to say it for a you know for putting out posts if you don't have a community already built it's very much you're going to have to put money behind it to make yeah. it go anywhere i do agree with you on that and i think though as well though with regards to like facebook you know and they're saying oh they wanted more community based they wanted more to, if your if your content is engaging and people do like it and they do comment on it it is going to be seen it's just a case of finding that right content that's the key to it now i think absolutely right absolutely right so you know it's just it's just harder at the start just to build that that really tight community but once you once you have and you've and you know the needs of that community and you're you know if, if let's take um the, the example that we're using of like the fresh herbs and growing that if you've built a community of people that are really interested in seeing that type of content then you know the more people that like it the more mm. priority you're going to get in the news feed and all that that wonderful stuff is perpetual right it falls mm. off the back of it but you know um i i, I just guess that i my personal feelings on the matter is that you don't need to be everywhere as a business when you if you truly understand your customer persona you'll know how your customers find you you know the kind of things you know where they spend Mm. most time on facebook or what social channels whether it's more of an instagram community who knows but ultimately i would i would choose the channels that do best for you if it's all four it's all four but you know if it's one or two um then just double down on the channels that work for you and if if facebook doesn't work for you then you know you you don't as far as i'm concerned and it's just my opinion on the matter. Oh, no, I know I would mean. agree with you. I would agree yeah. with you. You know, yeah. find out find out where your community is, or find out where your you know your customers are, and then work with that. You know what I mean? It's like opening a shop in the middle of nowhere and saying, "All oh, right, well, I hope customers come." When in actual fact, they all live in the town. So you want to be buying, you want to be opening a shop in the town as opposed to out on the outskirts type of thing. You know, so it's it's just I'm I'm one of these people that I like to do on real life analogies. I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> it, well, it makes it understandable, right? So yeah. you're you're a trainer by trade and you can tell because it makes it you know for, for someone that it might not be familiar to and even for someone mm. that's makes is this familiar to, to to explain it like like that makes a great deal of sense yeah man well that's it and that's i think like, that's what it is andy i could sit here and talk to you for ages we're uh we're, well we're not over we're not way over time um but i do want to ask you uh my question which is not related to anything content cal at all it's yes. um my question to you is as i ask this to all my guests is is if you had the chance to um, invite someone to dinner whether they be past or present who would it be and uh, why? Uh, I don't think my one's that well known um, and there's, there's a few uh, that I, w- I would potentially do that but I'm not going to cop out I'm going to say one from a business <laughs> perspective uh, the guy's name is Dharmesh Shah and he's the founder of of a company called HubSpot, which is a uh, customer relationship management software. Mm. But basically, from a from a business to business software perspective, uh, that company are my absolute heroes. Uh, they have created. I mean, it's taken them ten years, but they have created a market and owns a certain space for ten years. And in the world of software, that's really hard to do. So mm. they've owned this, the concept of inbound marketing. So everything from website analytics, from you know landing pages to customer feedback forms to managing managing all of that through the sales funnel and you know we the moment that we onboarded that hub spot here and it's it's not massively expensive but it's not cheap either um we we onboarded them about 12 months ago and the difference has made to our business has been absolutely remarkable wow um so and that's through all of the tools they've built and as i said they've that that whole term of inbound marketing was invented by hubspot and everything that they built around that whole ecosystem mm. is all of them all of their webinars their events their exhibitions the moment someone says inbound they immediately are thinking of HubSpot. Yeah, I would agree which, with you on that. So, um, yeah, they got a real large presence in Ireland too, actually. So, yeah. Um, so, it's a uh, yeah, great company. Anyway, so I'd love to sit down with him because what he's done is amazing. Yeah, and pick his brains, as they say. Well, well make sure when you're doing that, you give me a show. I'll, 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 I'll happily uh, jump in <laughs> on that. <which> I- <laughs> <laughs> love it. Love it. So, Andy, how can people reach out to you before we finish up here, just so that people can get in contact with you? How can they reach out to you if they want to talk to you? So, uh, yeah, I'm on. I'm pretty 
very active on on Twitter, so at Andy underscore R underscore Lambert, um, or you can just reach out on our Content Cal tag, which is co- at Content Cal underscore IO. Um, feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. You'll find me Andy Andy Lambert Content Cal. And uh, yeah, of course, there's a live chat widget. The moment you go on our website, contentcal.io, there's the little little chat widget in the bottom right, and me and the team will be there to, to chat to you if you want to want to chat to us there. So uh, amazing, yeah, amazing stuff. Andy, I wish you continued success, and no doubt I'd see you very, very soon because I will be over in the UK uh, over the next few weeks. So I will. Uh, we'll have to try and catch up for coffee. And um, you can buy me that dinner that you've been keep promising me to buy. <laughs> Love it. Yeah, you can help me to that. <laughs> so Andy, um, as I said, we wish you continued success and thanks for coming on the podcast today because I know you're extremely busy, um, flying around, and uh, best of luck in the future. And we will talk to you very soon. Uh, so thanks for joining us. Thanks so much. Really Ta- talk to you appreciate soon. Appreciate it. Take care. Talk Bye-bye. to you soon. Bye bye. So my thanks to Andy for coming on the podcast today and sharing with us all of the updates that are happening in Content Cal. And don't forget, for more information on Content Cal, you can log on to their website at contentcal.io. And you can also connect with Andy across all of the social media platforms. You'll find him on Twitter and also on LinkedIn as well if you want to contact him directly. And also, you can also, as I said himself, you can jump onto the website and they have a widget where you can speak to him directly as well on there. So as I said, once again, thanks to Andy for coming on the podcast today and sharing with us all of the updates and some of the exciting news that's happening around Content Cal. If you would like to listen to any of our previous podcasts, you can log on to our website at compassmedia.ie forward slash podcasts. And all of the podcasts are also available on Mixcloud, Stitcher Radio, Google Play, Spotify, and uh, Apple Podcasts as well. I was going to say iTunes. It isn't that anymore. We would also be delighted if you would leave us a rating and review as we're always thrilled to receive your feedback on any of our podcasts. You can also subscribe to all of the Social Media Talks podcasts so you never miss an episode there as well. And if you'd like the show notes from this episode or from any previous episode, you can log on to our website at compassmedia.ie forward slash show notes. If you'd like to become a guest on the show, We will be delighted to have you on. All you have to do is get in contact with us by email at smtalks at compassmedia.ie. And if you want to find out any more of the services that Compass Media provide, from social media marketing to training, you can log on to our website at compassmedia.ie. And if you want to connect with me directly on social, why not check me out on Twitter at Compass Media and we're also on Facebook at compassmedia.ie and if you want to connect with me on LinkedIn you can do so by looking for just Alan Hennessy you'll find me there that's about all for today so until next week at the same time have a great week I've been Alan Hennessy for Compass Media for the Social Media Talks podcast. And as I always say, have a great week and be social. All the next time, bye bye. Social Media Talks podcast is a production from compassmedia.ie.